Today we are working Psalm 33. Psalm 33 in magic is very frequently used to overcome fear, to overcome feelings of being unloved, to unite a family, to bless a family, to bless a mother who is pregnant. We're going to use it today for confidence. It's very important that we have confidence, that we can feel confident, because that way we have the fortitude to see things through and to be successful in our lives. Where if if we have that, that fear of failure or we lack that confidence, we don't have the energy behind our efforts. The way we work psalm magic is very simple, easy, and effective. We take the psalm in question and we speak it out loud all the way through once without stopping. This is frequently referred to as an incantation. Step number two After the incantation, we go back through the psalm and we consider each verse in turn and we search for hidden meanings behind each verse. We call those magic seeds. By searching and digging for those magic seeds, we are in effect planting those magic seeds deep in our minds where they take root, they grow, they blossom forth, and then they bear fruit after their kind. And that's what we are going to do together right now with Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, own inheritance, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men, From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. An horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. Beginning with, Rejoice in the Lord, all ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. We are speaking to the congregation. The congregation simply is the totality of our mind, the totality of our being. All the thoughts, all the thought forms, every aspect of who we are. We are commanding our innermost world to rejoice in the Lord. Who is the Lord? It's always important that we orient to that when we work psalm magic so we don't slip into superstition or religiosity if we're not careful keeping things very magical the lord is the force the one force the source the substance of all that is there's only one and since there's one nothing can oppose it and that's why psalm magic is so powerful because we orient to this one force, this one power. We have to recognize that it's not an anthropomorphic deity. It doesn't exist outside of us. It is that which is our creator that creates us in the moment. It's making our heart beat. 
It's making the planet spin. It's keeping everything alive. It is the one permeating source, substance, and force in all the universe. We rejoice in that. To rejoice is to give joy again and again. Find joy. Find happiness. Find something about your life that is worthy of rejoicing. It's better to be concrete. What do you have to rejoice about? It says, for praise is comely for the upright. Well, the upright is your soul. The upright is now what we are asking our personality to emulate. We want our personality to emulate our soul, not our ego. How do we do that? To rejoice. So yes, we rejoice in the source of all that is, but all that is what? How is it manifesting in your life? There is good in your life. If you had anything to eat today, there's something to rejoice about. If you've taken a breath today, there's something to rejoice about. If your heart is beating, if you have clothes on your back, if you have anything at all that is good, it is time to rejoice. Praise the Lord with the harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Any instrument of ten strings is something that you do with your ten fingers. Now, you can think of the ten strings also as being the tree of life, but let's keep everything basic here. An instrument of ten strings is anything that you do in the world. The psaltery and the harp are things that you pluck in the world with your hands, and singing is what you do with your voice. Everything you say and everything you do today is praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord simply means praising that which is good praising that which is good. Everything you do and say today is about praising good. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. It's important that whatever you're coming to the psalm for, that you change your mind about it. You want to sing a new song. You don't want to bitch and moan to the Lord today about how bad everything is. You want to sing a new song. You want to talk about what is good and what is working, and you want to do it loudly. Why loudly? To crowd out all of the naysayers in your mind. You don't want to constantly keep being reminded of what's not working or why you need this confidence or why things are are scary or whatever it is. You need to sing a new song and loudly, and you need to remind yourself again and again that praise is your job. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. The word of God is the will of God. The will of God is the divine design. The divine design includes you. You as a soul are a beam of holy, divine light directly from source. You are just as important as every other beam that comes out of the Lord, that comes out of this force. The word of the Lord is right, that you are the word of the Lord. That's who you are. God spoke you into an existence. You are supremely essential. That's something to praise. All his works are done in truth. You are true. You are a true work of infinite intelligence, just as essential and important as every other emanation. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of goodness of the Lord. So righteousness and judgment. Righteousness is who you are as a soul because that's how you were created. You were created as righteous. So you in your right mind, who you are as a soul, not who you are as an ego, which is you in your insane mind, your broken mind, your fractured or fragmented mind. In this world, we have to deal with the fact that we have egos which are fragmented and that don't see who we are as souls. We are souls that are perfect, that are expressions directly from this source. And infinite intelligence loves the soul and doesn't get the ego because the ego is not real. So the, all of the, our private thoughts, all of our private doings, all of the things that we think are separate and distinct from infinite intelligence, none of that matters to the infinite. 
The infinite only knows you as a soul and judges you as a soul. Righteousness and judgment judges you as a soul. You want that. What's God's judgment of you? You're fabulous. You're perfect. There's no problem with you. Anything that's telling you anything different in your mind or in the world is a lie. That's the judgment of God. The earth is full of goodness of the Lord. Therefore, since the earth is full of goodness, if you but understand that infinite intelligence knows who you are as a soul, loves you as a soul, has will for you as a soul, then when you get out of the way and you don't let that ego mind interfere, all of the manifestations of your life reflect that. By word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So the word of the Lord is the will of the infinite, the divine design. It's why the planets revolve around a sun. It's why there are seasons. It's why you have a heart beating. It's why things work the way they do. Babies come out of embryos. Seeds grow into trees. That's the word of the Lord. That is the divine design. Anything that doesn't look like the divine design is not real because it didn't come from the word or the will of God. And therefore, those things ultimately go away. The things that aren't part of that divine design. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in the storehouses. Gathering up the waters of the sea as a heap means in a vessel. They thought of the sea as the most frightening thing, the scariest thing. Therefore, the things that scare you the most, infinite intelligence gathers it up, puts it in a vessel, and makes it easy for you. You have nothing to worry about because infinite intelligence is gathering everything that's scary in your life into a vessel. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Anything that might swallow you up, infinite intelligence has it in a storehouse. Because what you will ultimately realize is is that the things that you were so scared of, if there is any reality to them, they aren't scary. And if there isn't any reality to them, they don't exist. And the infinite knows which is which. That's the judgment of God can tell what is real and what isn't real. And so anything that that is making you lose your confidence, in other words, anything that's scaring you, the infinite's got you. The infinite handles it for you. It's got the, the scariness all contained so that you understand there wasn't anything to fear because A, you didn't understand what it was, or B, it didn't really exist in the first place. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. The infinite is the only thing in the entire universe that's worthy of your awe. Nothing of the earth is worthy of your awe, no matter who or what it is. Even if you're a Christian, Jesus is not worthy of your awe. If you're a pagan, those deities are not worth your awe. The only thing that's worth your awe is the infinite, is the source, is the force. And that presence is ecstasy. That's the fear of the Lord. And when you're feeling that presence, when you're feeling that ecstasy, you know that all is well and that this magic is working. So let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Anything in the world that is manifest is subject to change, is subject to being vibrated into something else. The presence of the infinite can change anything, no matter what it is. And that's why awe is only reserved for that. Because if you are having awe for anything other than that, then you're misguided and you're not going to get the results that you want. You want to reserve awe for the infinite, feeling that presence, that quote, fear of the Lord. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Now it put it in the past tense, but infinite intelligence doesn't exist in the past. There is no past. There's no future for the infinite. The infinite is right now. That's why your heart beats now. That's why you breathe now. That's why the planet spins now. Everything's happening now. So you are created now. 
You are in the act of creation now, and the Word of God is happening through you now. It's, it's immediate. So he's speaking, and it is done. He's commanding, and it's standing fast. Everything in the universe that's real is a result of infinite intelligence's will. If it's not the result of infinite intelligence's will, then it's nothing but a hallucination, and there's nothing to fear. And you don't have to worry about it, because now that you're switching your allegiance from the things of this world to the infinite, the infinite has power over everything in the world and can zap any situation, any problem, anything at all. You're giving right of way to this infinite intelligence. So any problem can get healed, no matter what it is. There's no big, there's no small, there's no large and tiny. It's all the same. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. It doesn't matter what your fears tell you. It doesn't matter what your negative thoughts are doing. It doesn't matter what your self-destructive tendencies say. And it definitely doesn't matter what other people are doing or saying. And none of that matters. Infinite intelligence is completely immune to anything. However, the infinite must obey the infinite's own laws, which means you have free will. And until you invite that presence, until you invite that power, till you are willing to accept that for yourself, everything is held in potential for you. So nothing can happen for you until you give permission. That's how much power you have. Infinite intelligence grants you with that much power, that much freedom. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. The counsel of the Lord can mean so many things, but to an angel magician, it is the Elohim of which the Lord, the Tetragrammaton, is the mouthpiece, is the leader, is the chairman. There is a unity that is the force. There's only one, but it's a prismic effect. There are many serving as one. When you think in terms of a prism, there's one light, but there's all those colors. And the same thing is true for the counsel of the Lord. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. The, think about that. The thoughts of the heart of the infinite. The heart is the deep mind. So your deep mind, or your subconscious mind, if you will, is in control of everything in your life. According to this psalm, the infinite has a deep mind as well. The thoughts of that deep mind go out to all generations. No matter how old your problem is, infinite intelligence has it handled. I don't care how long something's been happening, it's taken care of. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what your ancestry is. I don't care about generational curses. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about anything. Infinite intelligence has this. All generations. Anything in your mind that is as old as Methuselah, <laughs> you're not subject to it. You may have been life after life going through something and it doesn't matter because when you're working a psalm like this, it's taken care of in an instant. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. It's talking about you. Take it personally. The people in the psalm when you're working magically is your thoughts and your thought forms. The nation is overarching thought forms. Blessed are each thought form in your mind whose God is the Lord. You don't look to money as your God. You don't look to your job as your God. You don't look to your car as your God. You don't look to your marriage as your God. You don't look to your kids as your God. You don't look to your parents as your God. You don't look to anything in the world as your God. No matter what it is, if each and every overarching thought form in your mind has the Lord, meaning the source, as your God, all is well. You are blessed. Those are the people whom the infinite has chosen for its own inheritance, no matter what happens. Because you understand who your source is, you can claim your inheritance. If you think that your good comes from money in the world, you don't get to claim your inheritance. There is no inheritance there. 
If you think that your good comes from sexual encounters, you don't get to claim your inheritance from that. There is no inheritance there. Not that those things are bad, but they're not the source of your inheritance. The only source of your inheritance is the infinite. And so if you are focused on that, if you orient yourself toward the infinite as being your source, then your inheritance is available to you. And your inheritance will look like whatever it needs to look like because it's so unique unto you because of the divine. So you are an expression of that divinity. That divine design of, of your life is always shining brightly. And your inheritance is available to you at any moment of time and point of space that you are willing to recognize that your source is the infinite. The Lord looketh from heaven and beholdeth all the sons of men. It's like a star that is shining brightly, and you are a beam of light from the star. And infinite intelligence creates you out of love, and you are a creature of love. From the place of his from the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. If you are recognizing that the infinite is the source and that you are an expression of that source, then you are also looking along with the infinite at all of the manifestations in your life. And you can see that they are good and that they are very good. And any that don't look good, then that means that you are trying to see something other than what the infinite is seeing with you. And if you change and you turn your focus and you become one with the vision of the infinite, then those things which were problems get burned away. They completely get burned away. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. Infinite intelligence fashioned your soul. You are an expression of that. It says he considereth all their works. Infinite intelligence doesn't leave you alone or unattended, but gives you freedom, both at the same time. You have the freedom to do what you will. You have the freedom to think what you will. And infinite intelligence isn't going to stop you. But infinite intelligence always knows the truth about you. So when you're lost in a fantasy, when you're lost in some dark corner of the universe in your mind and have some sort of nightmare about something that's not really going on, infinite intelligence still knows the truth about you and wants you to wake up and is there to help you wake up, but won't interfere because you have the right to think and be and do and feel any way you want. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Don't look to people to save you. The most powerful military in the world cannot save you from your own nightmares. But the infinite can, and the infinite will, when you give the infinite the permission to do so, and allow yourself to see your life from the eyes of the infinite rather than from the eyes of the ego. And that's when you start to awaken. But that desire has to come from you. It will not be thrust upon you. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Don't look to the vehicles of this world. Don't look to anything of this world, be it money, be it force, be it uh, body, no matter what it is, military, police, whatever, nothing in this world is going to help you, but the infinite is. And the infinite will usually use those things to your benefit when necessary. It may appear to the world that it's happening through a vehicle of some sort, but it's ultimately happening through the infinite. You don't want to get lost and mired in the things of the world thinking, oh, that's going to save me. That's going to save me. That's going to save me. No, the infinite may use those things, but the infinite is where you focus. Infinite intelligence, what it's calling the Lord in the psalm. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. To fear the Lord is to feel the presence of the Lord. If you're not feeling the presence of the Lord, then the Lord's eye isn't upon you in regards to the solving of any problem, or in this case, your confidence, because you're using your free will to do something else. And the infinite always has to honor your free will, because that's the gift you were given. 
until you are experiencing the fear of the Lord, meaning the presence of God, you are cutting yourself off from the help that's already there at all times. So just remind yourself, no, I'm going to feel the presence. I'm going to feel the presence of infinite intelligence. And when I feel the presence of the infinite within me, then I know that the eye of the Lord is upon me and that I can hope in the Lord's mercy. The Lord's mercy simply means the solving of whatever problem that you might have. Mercy means that that you are confident because there's nothing for you to fear. If you fear the Lord, there's nothing to fear. Because fearing the Lord isn't fear in the way that the world understands it. It's the only fear that doesn't have any pain because it's feeling the presence and ecstasy of the infinite. And if you're feeling the presence and ecstasy of the infinite, there's nothing that can harm you and there's nothing to fear. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. So what's the famine in your life? What are you afraid of? Where are you lacking confidence? Whatever those things are, you can list them off one at a time. And you can recognize that infinite intelligence is delivering you from this. Delivering your soul from death, meaning delivering you from any effects of the world that you are feeling unconfident about, that you're feeling afraid about. Whatever those things are, you can go through them one at a time in your mind and recognize that the infinite is delivering you from those things, has delivered you from those things. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. To wait upon the Lord is to not rush in and do things all by yourself and think all by yourself. Because when you do that, what does infinite have to do? Wait. You don't want the Lord to wait on you. You want to wait on the Lord. Because if the Lord is waiting on you, it's because you're busy doing stuff that is not important. You're busy doing stuff that's distracting and delaying from whatever good needs to occur. If the Lord is waiting on you, then you are delaying. If you're waiting on the Lord, it means that you have absolute confidence that everything is working out just exactly the way it should. And you don't need to rush in and fix things. You don't need to rush in and change things unless you're directed to do so, which you will be, because if you're waiting on the Lord, then that means that you are being guided intuitively and that you will know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and when not to do anything. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we have trusted in His holy name. Well, we don't have time to go through all the names of the infinite, but if you watch any of my videos on the qualities of spirit, you will know what the names of God are. That There's very definite names of God, and those names simply mean the qualities of God, the qualities of the infinite. And when you've trusted in those qualities, and your heart, meaning your innermost self, is rejoicing in those qualities then you know you are right where you're supposed to be. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Mercy is the solving of your problem. Actually, it's already been solved. And now you just are wanting the manifestation of that solution. The biggest part of that is getting out of the way and letting the infinite do its work. But until then, you keep your mind as focused as you can upon the infinite as we hope in thee hope means having faith knowing that everything's working out perfectly and until you get that sense of certainty and that sense of peace about the situation you got to keep coming back to the psalm every single day each and every day and then eventually you get that click you get that sense that all is well Everything's working out and you have nothing to worry about. When you get that click, when you get that sense, you know your spell has been cast and you can move on and you can do something else. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Until next time, blessed be.